The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the terrifying world of your imagination. Vampire. Perhaps in the safety of your home, the word means little to you. Oh, you've heard of vampires, of course. But do you believe that they exist? Not you. Well, all I can say is, Minna Harker didn't believe either. Nor did Dr. John Seward. Not till that night in the graveyard when they gazed horror-stricken into that coffin and heard Professor Van Helsing say, No, Miss Harker, John, don't turn away. Look, see for yourselves the truth. Horrible. It's horrible. What? Van Helsing, what can be done? A stake must be driven into the body, straight through the heart, and then the head cut off. Oh, can you... Can you bring yourself to do that, Van Helsing? That is not the question, John. The question is, can you? Our mystery drama, Dracula, was specially adapted from the story by Bram Stoker for the Mystery Theater by George Lothar and stars Mercedes McCambridge. purest form lies ahead for us. I would be remiss if I didn't warn you that if your nerves are not strong, it might be better for you not to listen. No, really now. Be warned. Because as Minna Harker tells us in the diary she kept, there awaits you... An experience so loathsome, so horrifying, that I can hardly bring myself to write of it. If I'd known what lay ahead for me when I went to visit my dearest and closest friend, Lucy Wistenra, at Hillingham, I could not have brought myself to go, much as I loved her. Looking back now, I realize I had plenty of warning, but I paid no attention. For example, as I drove to the Wistenra estate through that lonely, isolated country and heard the wolves howling in the distance, it occurred to me that it was strange to hear wolves in this part of the country. As strange as the huge bat that flew alongside my car. I mentioned this to John, Dr. John Seward, Lucy's fiancé, as we sat having a drink in the living room. It's strange, Minna. I've, I've seen that bat myself. The thing must have a wing spread of at least four feet. I haven't the faintest idea where it came from, or the wolves, either. Even Lucy's letters seemed kind of strange to me, John. What is the matter with her? Oh, I don't know. I'm completely baffled. I've had two other doctors look at her colleagues of mine, and they can't figure it out. I'm desperate, Minna. I'm so desperate, I've called in my old friend and teacher, Professor Van Helsing. Van Helsing? Yes, he's one of the finest diagnosticians in the world, John. Yes, he'll be here from Amsterdam in a day or two. Amsterdam, Holland? Yeah. All the way from Amsterdam. Oh, John, you must be desperate. Lucy is dying, Minna. I'll do anything I can to save her. We, we must find a way to stop her from losing blood. Losing blood? Well, it's this constant loss of blood that's killing her. Transfusions help for a time, but only a short time, and each transfusion is less effective. John, when can I see her? Oh, she's sleeping now. Her mother's with her, watching her. We take turns. As soon as Mrs. Westenra lets us know she's awake... Oh, listen, those wolves, they're at it again. John, hasn't anyone looked into this wolf thing? How they suddenly come to be in this part of the country? Well, according to the paper, the town police have looked into it. Well, that's peculiar, too. What? Well, they haven't been able to spot one single wolf. Oh, uh, excuse me, we have a visitor. Oh, 
over. Come in, Count, come in. Thank you, Doctor. I'm on my way to town. I have a dinner engagement, and I thought I would stop to ask after Miss Westenra. She's no better, I'm afraid. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, can you stay for a drink? Well, I... I'd like you to meet a friend of Lucy's who will be staying with us for a while. Oh, in that case, of course. Uh, Minna, this is Count Dracula, our new neighbor. Count Miss Minna Harker. How do you do? How do you do? Count Dracula? Yes, but do not hold it against me, Miss Harker. I cannot help being of the blood royal. Well, why don't you two get acquainted while I go up and see if Lucy's awake yet? I shall do my best to entertain this charming young lady. I won't be a minute. You are a long way from home, Count. A very long way, Miss Harker. So may I ask what brought you here? Business. Business? Good heavens, what kind of business could you have in this part of the country? I mean, it's so isolated. <laughs> True, it does present difficulties, but... Uh, I like living in the country. Well, you must. Oh, forgive me, I'm forgetting my manners. Would you like a drink? Uh, thank you. A scotch or bourbon? Is there perhaps some wine? Red wine. Now, let me see. I'm not very familiar with the supply here. It's... Ah, here we are. There's a bottle of burgundy. Ah, that glass of that will be... Oh. Miss Arca, what's wrong? I, I... Uh... What is it? Oh, uh... It's the bottle, I'm afraid. it slipped. It slipped. That's all. Oh, my, I'm afraid I cut my hand. No, no, don't count. Don't be upset. It's only a slight no. cut. See? No. Uh, Lucy's awake and we can... Count, what's wrong? <laughs> Minna, oh, I, your hand. I must leave at once, Doctor. Sorry, I cannot stay. Something I just remembered. No, 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 it's all right. I will see myself now. What in the world? But, Count... Minna, what happened? Minna? I dropped the bottle of wine and cut my hand. Yes, I, I, I see you did, but... I dropped the bottle because... Because I couldn't see him in the mirror. Couldn't see? Who, what mirror? This mirror over the table. It reflects the whole room. Well, of course it does, but... John, John, I picked up the bottle to pour Count Dracula a drink, and I yes. looked into the mirror, and he was standing where you are now, and I couldn't see him in the mirror. What? He was there where you're standing, but he wasn't reflected in the glass. Minna, you're not making sense. And you're trembling. John, I'm scared. Of what? How can you ask? I look in the mirror and didn't see someone who should have been reflected in it. Is something going wrong with my eyes or my brain, John? Oh, what? Minna, easy, easy. I don't want another patient on my hands. But, John, I... An optical illusion, something like that. Our eyes play tricks on us sometimes. Now, come on. Let's get a bandage for that cut, and then we'll go up and see Lucy. Ah! I believe, John, it must have been. It had to be a trick my eyes had played. What else? Well, we got a bandage for the cut on my hand, and then John took me to Lucy's room. I can't find words to describe the shock I felt when I saw her. She was white as new-fallen snow, and so thin, she almost seemed transparent. She's dying. That was my first thought. She's dying, and nothing can save her. And I know she read the thoughts in my face. I could see the sudden fear in her eyes. I am dying. Oh, you mustn't even think that, Lucy. You do. I? It was in your face when you looked at me. I read your thoughts. She's dying, you thought. And nothing can save her. I am. And nothing can save me. Oh, John can save you. And he will. He hasn't so far. You mustn't despair, Lucy. Despair, Minna? I don't have the strength to despair. You better go now, Minna. Go? Lucy, dear, I haven't seen you in nearly a year. We haven't even started to tell each other everything that's happened. Later. Uh, not, not now. I'm, I'm tired. I want to sleep. Oh, well, in that case, I'll come back later. No, uh, not till tomorrow. All right, whatever you say. But I'll just look in on you, lady. No, I... Lucy. You mustn't. You mustn't. 
all right, all right, then. But stop upsetting oh, yourself. Oh, go, go quickly. Oh, good Lord. At the window. It's, it's nothing. Go, Minna. It's nothing. Nothing. It's that bat. That huge bat that followed my car. Oh, go, I beg of you. Lucy, the thing is trying to get in. Look, it's clawing at the window. Is that locked? Is that window yes, locked? Yes, it's locked. But locks are useless against Count Dracula. Oh, good Lord. Mirrors do not reflect my image, Miss Harker. Nor do locks keep me out. You, you, you were that bat. As the wolves you hear are not wolves, but like myself, vampires. Vampires? The dead who live by night. The dead, undead. No, this, this can't be happening. It's a dream. It's a nightmare. That's what it will seem like when you wake up. Huh? Yes, you're going to sleep now. And yet not sleep. You will remember all you see in here, but when you wake in, it will seem like a dream. A dream you'll tell no one, not even Professor Van Helsing. Because you will not want to look foolish. You'll be ashamed to tell it for fear he will think you're a silly young woman. I... Enough. <sighs> sleep. Did I sleep? Did I dream? No. My sleep was a hypnotic trance into which he had placed me. And what I dreamed was reality. There in the moonlight that streamed through the window, I saw Dracula raise his arms and call. Lucy. Lucy, my dearest love, come to me. Come, my darling. My lover, I'm too weak. Then I shall come to you. Embrace you. Kiss you. And now the strangest thing of all happened to me. As I watched what then took place, my love for my friend Lucy, my fears for her, made me feel as she must have felt so poignantly, so deeply that, yes, I became Lucy. I watched Dracula as he approached my bed. There was a deliberate voluptuousness in him which I found both thrilling and repulsive. Lower and lower went his head as the lips went below the range of my mouth and chin and seemed about to fasten on my throat. I could feel the hot breath on my neck. Then the skin of my throat began to tingle. I could feel the soft, shivering touch of his lips on the supersensitive skin of my throat and then too hard Dents of two sharp teeth just touching and pausing there. I closed my eyes in a languorous ecstasy. And I waited. I waited with a beating heart. And then horror overcame me. And I sank into unconsciousness. I promised you horror. Have I kept my promise? Here then, another promise. Another warning. I promise that the horror you have just experienced is nothing compared to what is to come. Think twice before you return with me shortly with Act Two. her friend, Lucy Westenra, at the Westenra's lonely estate far out in the country, Minna Harker comes face to face with horror in the form of a vampire, Count Dracula. 
she has witnessed the frightful scene of Dracula entering her friend's bedroom, biting her throat, sucking her blood. So gruesome was it all, or perhaps because of hypnotic suggestion, as Minna writes in her diary. I thought it must have been a dream, a nightmare, for nothing so vile and revolting could be real. But though I tried during the next day or two to persuade myself it was only a dream, there were signs, warnings all about me that told me I was lying to myself. There was the nightly howling of the wolves, the screeching of that huge bat around the house. And yes, the scarf that Lucy kept wrapped round her throat. It's such a hot afternoon. How can you bear to wear that scarf around your throat? Hot? I feel cold. But Lucy, you're perspiring. Your forehead is damp. All I want to do is sleep. I'm so tired. I'm so deathly tired. I'll leave you for a while then. I'll look in on you later to make sure you're all right. Oh. Sleep well. Minna? Yes, dear? If I'm asleep when you come back, promise me you won't remove this scarf from around my throat. Very well. You won't even touch it. Promise? I promise. Later that afternoon, toward evening, Professor Van Helsing arrived from Holland... When John introduced me to him, he stared at me suddenly and hard, his eyes boring into me from behind his thick lens glasses. You are frightened, Miss Harker? Why? Frightened? Maybe she hasn't recovered from that optical illusion the other night. Optical illusion? Yes, you see that mirror over the table there? Yes. Well, we had a visitor, Count Dracula, a new neighbor, Carfax, a few miles from here. And Minna had the illusion that she couldn't see his reflection in the mirror. My eyes must have played a trick on me, Professor. Yes. Uh, This Count Dracula, John, he's uh, new here, you say? Yes, he arrived from Hungary about six weeks ago. I see. Take me to see your fiancé, John. Oh, uh, she's sleeping, Lucy. Well, sleeping. We'd right better now. wake her up. Uh, what is it? You seem suddenly concerned. I am. Take me to Lucy at once. I'll wake her, John. All right. Gently. Very gently. Lucy? Lucy, dear. Come on, wake up. Uh, Here, here, here. Let me... Hmm. Pulse weak, very weak. Eyes. Oh, she's not asleep, she's in a coma. What is her blood type? Oh. So is mine. Prepare for a transfusion, John. I will be the donor. And hurry, man, hurry. Yes, yes, of course. Meanwhile, I shall have a look under this scarf. No, no, she didn't want the scarf removed. I'm sure she didn't, Miss Harker, but we're going to remove it. Aha. Uh-huh. As I thought. What? What is it? Yes, Professor, what? Look. Look. There are two... Two little holes. Wounds. As if she'd been bitten by a large snake. No. Not a snake. What then? What? We must be quick with the transfusion. Very quick. And pray God. Pray God, both of you. That I have not arrived too late. <laughs> was too late. The transfusion revived Lucy a little when we'd made her as comfortable as we could. The three of us, Professor Van Helsing, John and I, went back down to the living room. And it was here that Professor Van Helsing told us the truth. The truth that made John Seward cry out. Vampire? You say we are dealing with a vampire? Professor, have you gone out of your mind? My dear John, I don't blame you. Blame me? I should hope not. You ask me to believe me, a doctor, a man of medical science? (laughs) Science? Uh, There's more to this world than science. But, Professor, a vampire? I can't believe that there's a vampire. I tell you that witches exist. That warlocks exist. 
that vampires exist. And we are dealing with one here. But if, if what you say is true... It is, it is. Ask her. Ask Miss Harker. Me? Uh, you had an experience in this house that you are concealing. You choose to think it was a dream. When did it happen, child? Last night? No. The night before. Where? In Lucy's bedroom. Minna, what happened? I... I dreamed... No, it was no dream. All right, then. I saw... Oh, heaven protect me. I saw... You needn't tell me. No need to put you through that. I would if I didn't know who our vampire is. But I do know. Who? The man whose reflection she could not see in that mirror. Your new neighbor, Count Dracula. I don't believe you. I cannot believe you. If you can't believe me, at least trust me. Oh, I'll answer that. Wait. Yes, Professor. Uh, if that should be Count Dracula, you did say that he calls about this time each evening, John? Yes. Say nothing, do nothing to give away the fact that we are unto him. God, this is nonsense, sheer do nonsense. Do as I tell you. You may answer the door now, Miss Harker. Yes. Good evening, Miss Harker. Count Dracula? Oh, come in. And how is Miss West Enra today? Not too well, I'm afraid. She had to have another transfusion. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, John. Very sorry to hear that. Thank you, Count. I do not believe I have met this gentleman. Oh, uh, in, I'm sorry. No, you, you haven't. Uh, let me present my old friend and teacher, Professor Abraham Van Helsing. Uh, Professor, this is Count Dracula. How do you do, Professor? How do you do, Count? Well, I wished only to inquire about your fiancée, John. I'm sorry indeed to hear she is no better. If there is anything I can do... Thank you. Meeting you, Professor, has been a pleasure. Good night. Oh, um, Count. Yes? Uh, Mrs. Westenra keeps asking me to do this, and I keep forgetting. Uh, there is a custom in the Westenra family to ask visitors to sign the visitor's book. Ah, charming old world custom. It's John. right here. If you'll just wait a second, I'll, I'll get it, and um, then you can sign it. <gasps> is something wrong? It the Bible? Well, well, yes. Why do you back away from me? Or are you backing away from the book? The holy book? I must go. Oh, no, no, you'll stay and face this book. You know. You know. John, you fool. You shouldn't have done this. I had to. I had to have proof. I will make you pay for this. You shall pay. Oh, no. Not now. Now that I have found out what you are. Oh, John, John. Do you think because you discovered my secret you can stop me? Fool. You've only delivered yourself into my hands. I meant to make Lucy one of mine, and that was all. But now you shall become mine, and you... Not I. Yes, and you... No, I beg you. I shall have you all, but first... Lucy, I shall take her. Take her. Now. She is mine. She is no longer of this world, but of mine. I leave you. Into a bat, the bat, and he flew right through the wall. John, oh, John, why did you do this? Why, after I warned you, I, I had to know one way or the other. I had to know. There's only one way to finish a vampire. Well, the first thing you must do is find out where he sleeps during the day. <coughs> Lucy, <coughs> Professor, quickly, Professor. There is no hurry now. When he said he meant to make her his own, he had already done so. It was true. Lucy was dead. We went to her bedroom and found her. Dead. I felt as if I'd been stabbed to the heart. We buried her, my dearest friend, in the Westenra vault at Hillingham Cemetery, not far from town. Lucy is gone. Dead? No. No, not dead. Not dead, Professor. She has become the undead. 
She has become a vampire. What are you saying? John, listen to me. Believe in me. You didn't believe before. Believe now. Yes, yes, yes. I believe you. Go on. Go on. John, you, you, you feel you've been through hell. I must tell you that you have been through only the anteroom to hell. What do you mean? Now listen to me. Listen carefully. There is only one way in which a vampire can find peace can be changed from the undead to the dead. What you must do, terrible as it will be, will release her soul from the horrifying bondage in which it finds itself. Her soul and Dracula's. Dracula's? Do you think a vampire wants to be a vampire? I don't know. Oh, no, no. A vampire's soul is chained, pinioned, held mercilessly to this earth by Satan himself. And we, we who believe in God, are the only ones who can free them. It is our duty to destroy them. Well, then let's destroy them. We shall, if you have the nerve to do what, what must be done. I have the nerve. Professor, you frighten me. I mean to in order to prepare you. But no matter how well I prepare you, when it comes to doing what must be done, your, your sanity could snap like, like that. So first I will ask you both to take as much time as you need to, to think, to ask yourselves, how much did you, do you really love Lucy Westenra? And be sure, be positive beyond all doubt that your love for her is greater than the hell that lies ahead. Lies ahead for you and you this very night. One section of Minna Harker's diary ends at this point. I've read the next and final section, and I can tell you this. Van Helsing said that John and Minna had only experienced the anteroom to hell. He was right. Fearfully right. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. We come now to that final section of Minna Harker's diary. You've been warned about what lies ahead. So I'll not warn you again. But, quite honestly, I wish someone had warned me before I read it, this final section. Why? Because I've never quite gotten over it. That's why. I thought I knew what horror was until I read it. I changed my mind. You will too. I'm ready, Professor. I knew you would be, John. We'll wait now for Miss Harker. No, no, there's no need to wait. I love Lucy enough. More than enough. She was my dearest friend. Is your dearest friend. For she is not yet dead. She is as yet the dead undead. It's nearly sundown. Let us go to the cemetery at once. The cemetery? It will be dark by the time we get there. She will have left her coffin. Left it? Uh, like Count Dracula, she cannot go on living, or let me say, being the undead without drinking human blood. Uh, to find it, she must, of course, leave her coffin. The instant the sun goes down tonight, she will be on the prowl for little children. Children? Yes, children are innocent, gullible, naive, make easier victims. And the inexperienced vampire must... Uh, practice, yes, she, she will be seeking children. Oh, it's revolting. Revolting? Well, that is only a word to you at the moment. In a short time, it will be reality. But do you really think you can bear what, what is to come? I can. I must. Good. Uh, I have uh, preparations to make. So do you, the two of you. Dress warmly. Warmly? But it's hot out. Child, there is no chill like a graveyard chill. We drove to Hillingham Cemetery in John's car. I'd never been in a cemetery at night. How many people have? 
I found it a very unsettling experience, to say the least. It was a moonlit night, the moonlight spilling like milk over the gravestones, which in turn threw long black shadows. An owl hooted, and dogs barked, or I couldn't help thinking, were they wolves? And then we reached the West End Revolt, the vault where we'd put Lucy's coffin that afternoon. Now what do we do, Professor? We go into the vault. Why? Uh, and how? I have the key to the vault. How did you get it? I asked the undertaker for it, or rather told him to give it to me. He assumed I was a member of the family. Uh, you need not come with me. Not now. But why shouldn't we come? I wish to save you as much shock as I can. She will not be there in the coffin. It will be a shock for you to find it empty. Now, on the other hand, it will be less a shock than what is to follow. Yes, it will prepare you. Come then. Now, I shall open the coffin now. If she... if she isn't in it... How could she have got out? I could tell you, but it is better that you see for yourself later. Now, this won't take long. I need only unscrew the top part. There. Uh, now, to lift off the top of the lid. Yes. Empty. She is gone. Where? Gone where? In God's name, where? In search of the life-giving blood, John. In search of a small child. Oh, it's horrible. It's horrible. John. Yes? Come. We go outside the vault. <laughs> now to lock the door. Ah, that's most important. And now, what I must do will take a little time. Yes, make yourselves as comfortable as you can. <laughs> make ourselves comfortable. Professor, what must you do? Well, I have here a paste made of garlic, flour, and water. Uh, I must seal off every crevice with it. Seal all around the door so Lucy cannot get back into the vault, into her coffin. She could? Through the crevices, yes. How do you think she got out of the coffin? I can't believe... Yes, yes, yes. It is unbelievable. But it is so. Now, forgive me. I must get to work. I can't express in words how fresh and clean the night air seemed when we came out of the tomb. How sweet to breathe the fresh air that held no taint of death or decay. John was silent, and so was I. As for Professor Van Helsing, he was very busy sealing the door. Ten o'clock. I hope both of you took my advice, dressed warmly. We have a long wait ahead of us. How much longer, Professor? I'm chilled to the bone. Uh, everything depends on how long it takes her to find a small child. Uh, nearly two o'clock. She's been gone several hours. Soon now, I think... Shh! What? She comes. Where? See there? Amidst the headstones? Yes, a woman. Dressed in white. Lucy. Shh! Shh. Make no move, no noise. See, she is carrying something in her arms. A child. I feel sick. Control yourself. Ah, there. Yes, she's coming toward the vault. <gasps> See, she draws back. Uh, the mixture I used repels her. <gasps> Why are we doing this? Why are you keeping her out of the vault, her coffin? Because I hope... Ah, yes. Yes, she is leaving, hurrying away from her along the headstones... Come, we, we must follow. Follow? Follow where? To Dracula, I hope. Unless I'm mistaken, she's going to him for help. Oh, hurry, hurry. We must keep her Go in on. sight. No, wait. What is it? She is heading for 
for that tomb. Dracula must be there. Good. What? Uh, see now, she's putting the child down. Uh, the ground. And now I want... Where? Where is she? Where is she? She's vanished. She simply slipped into the tomb through the crevice around the door. Oh, wait here. Yes. What's he doing? He's picking up the child, I think. Yes. See, he, he, he's coming back now. Here, Miss Harker. You take the child. Keep it warm. Oh, this poor thing. Poor little thing. Look, it doesn't move. It doesn't make a sound. It's lifeless. No. No, only in a trance. It will recover. But remember, when I ask you to do what must be done, remember that we have saved not only this child, but God knows how many others. I'll remember. Good. And now we will... Return to her tomb and wait till dawn. Till dawn? She will return to the tomb then. She has no choice. Dracula cannot help her. She must sleep in her own coffin before daybreak. <laughs> How do you feel, Miss Harker? I'm all right. Thank you. John... I'm okay. It's almost dawn. Why doesn't she come? Soon, soon now. Uh, how's the child? Still asleep, if it is only sleep. It is, it is. It will not come to its senses until daybreak. Now, prepare yourselves for... In a very short time, now Lucy should... Ah, uh, there, there. Yes, she's, she's coming. And this time she'll be able to enter the tomb. Could you remove... The garlic mixture. This time I want her to enter the tomb and her coffin. It will be there that you will do what, what must be done. Oh, there, there she is. Oh, heaven help me. She is as beautiful as she always was. Now hold on to yourself. She, she isn't dead. She can't be dead. Lucy! Lucy, my darling! John! No, come back! Lucy! John, my dearest, come to me, John! Come to me. I have never seen anything so horrible. And God save me from ever seeing it again. Lucy's eyes shone with an unholy light. And her face became wreathed with a voluptuous smile as she advanced toward John with outstretched arms. Come to me, dearest. My arms are hungry for you. Come, and we can rest together in the tomb. Come, my lover. Come. And John suddenly opened wide his arms and started running to her and she to him when Van Helsing rushed forward between them. And he raised something he held in his hand up against her face. It was a crucifix. With a cry of rage and ah! agony, Lucy flung herself away from John and toward the tomb, and she was gone. John? John, are you all right? The Lord help me. The Lord help me. And he shall come into the tomb. It's time. Now, oh, first let me put the bag I brought over here. Now I will remove the coffin lid again. Professor, is this really Lucy's body or some kind of demon in her shape? Oh, she's hideous. Yes. Yes, your friend who was so sweet and pure is now a foul thing. But if you can do what you must do, you will see her once again as she was. Whatever it is, we'll do it. This wooden stake I have bought. Yes. This pointed stake. You must drive it through Lucy's heart. With this hammer. Oh, no. And when that is done, cut off her head with this surgical knife. I, I, I don't... You, I don't... You must do it. For her sake, John. For the sake of the woman you loved... Right. 
Give me the stake. And the hammer. John took the stake in his left hand, the hammer in his right. I saw him tremble as he placed the point of the stake over Lucy's heart. Saw the point dig into her white flesh. And then I could see him gather all his strength, all his self-control. He raised the hammer high above his head and looked at Van Helsing. Yes. Now, John struck with all his might. The thing in the coffin writhed and a hideous blood-curdling screech came from the opened lips. The body shook and twisted in wild contortions. John never faltered. He struck, and he struck again, driving the stake deeper, deeper. His blood from the pierced heart welled and spurted up around it. And then the writhing and quivering of the body became less. The teeth stopped champing, and the thing lay still. It was over. Is that enough, Professor? Enough. I... I think I'm... I think I'm going to... I've got you. There. Now go outside, get some air. No. Both of you go. You look faint too, Miss Parker. I must do her head. No, no. You have done all that can be asked of you. No more. I will sever the head. Now go now, but before you do, look at your beloved Lucy for the last time. There, in the coffin, lay no longer the foul thing we dreaded. Lucy, as we had seen her in life, her face as beautiful and pure as it had been then. You will want to know that later on, Professor Van Helsing freed Count Dracula from his earthly bondage, and in so doing, brought his bloody career to an end. Unhappily, I must add that Count Dracula was only one vampire among uh, how many? I don't know. Hope I never find out. Hope you don't either. I'll be back shortly. I've been asked do vampires really exist? No one will deny that strange, bizarre, and, yes, gruesome things happen in this world which no one can explain. As Professor Van Helsing himself said, what science cannot prove, science claims does not exist. Well, anyhow, I play it safe. Use plenty of garlic. I'm afraid it keeps my friends at a distance as well as vampires. But then, you can't have everything. Our cast included Mercedes McCambridge, Paul Hecht, Stefan Schnabel, Michael Wager, and Marion Seldes. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams...
friendly music station, KIXI. Dial 91 AM or 96 FM, Seattle. 12 midnight. CBS News. There's a new report claiming that former White House counsel John Dean used a top official of the Justice Department to get information about the Watergate probe. This is Doug Poling reporting on the CBS radio network. The Associated Press quotes sources as saying Watergate prosecutors involved in the original probe stopped giving information to Assistant Attorney General Henry Peterson because Peterson was passing the information to the White House. AP says its sources emphasized Peterson was being used by John Dean. The Dean told Peterson the information was wanted by President Nixon when, in fact, Dean was passing the material on to potential Watergate defendants. The three major broadcast networks say they are making plans to install cameras and microphones to cover the hearings of the House Judiciary Committee on the impeachment of President Nixon. The networks are putting in their equipment, but have not announced a final decision on whether to broadcast the proceedings live. On Thursday, the committee voted to allow live broadcast coverage of the hearings. More news after this message. Your attention, please. Now announcing Exploring America 74 departures for Dodge City, Kansas, Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, Turkey Run Farm, Virginia, Hadlock Farm. Did you hear that? It's the brand new Exploring America Weekend with more fascinating places to visit this year. Exploring America 74 with Charles Carroll. A 30 broadcast weekend special. This Saturday and Sunday, the 4th and 5th, on the CBS Radio Network. Secretary of State Kissinger will be leaving Israel shortly, probably less than a few hours from now, to continue his effort to get Israel and Syria to pull back their armies along the Golan Heights. Kissinger flies to Damascus to discuss it with Syrian leaders. In Jerusalem, Israeli Foreign Minister Abba Eben said this about his talks Thursday with Kissinger. We've had a very uh, comprehensive review of all the elements involved in the Syrian-Israeli disengagement agreement. The discussion was very uh, thorough, very fundamental, and very uh, very friendly in its atmosphere. Uh, we haven't reached the end of that discussion. We're continuing uh, we're working right up until Secretary Kissinger's departure. As the talking continues, so does the fighting. Israel says its artillery landed within nine miles of Damascus and Israeli planes attacked Palestinian guerrilla bases on the Lebanese side of Mount Hermon. These late items from San Francisco, FBI agents raided an apartment Thursday apparently used by the Symbionese Liberation Army as a hideout following a bank robbery last month. The FBI was tipped about the incident, but newsmen who were on the scene for the surprise raid said the agents and police found clothing used in the bank holdup by the kidnappers of Patricia Hurst. The abandoned apartment in San Francisco's Western Edition section was about eight minutes from the bank that was robbed. This other item, also a late item from San Francisco, four of seven men arrested in connection with the zebra killings were released Thursday night, according to San Francisco police. Police Sergeant William Kearney said the men were freed because it became evident during the course of the investigation that no further proceedings against them are feasible at this time. He identified those released as Thomas Manny, 31, former star football player at San Francisco State University in the early 60s, Clarence Jamerson, 37, Dwight Stallings, 28, and Edgar Burton, 22. The Soviet Union has demanded China immediately return a Soviet helicopter and its three-man crew forced down over China in mid-March. In a harshly worded statement, the Russians said if China does not return the chopper and its crew, Peking will suffer what Moscow terms the inevitable consequence. Now this message. Even if someone served them a slice of beef, they couldn't bite into it. Their teeth are too weak. I'm not talking about some people of in Africa or Asia. I'm talking about Americans, American children. It's tragic how many thousands of them are in this country whose teeth will literally rot in their mouths because they'll never receive basic dental care. They may not even own a toothbrush. What hurts is that it takes so very little for any one of us to help them. The same dollar, for instance, that buys you two packs of cigarettes can buy three American children the first toothbrushes they've ever owned. I'm Cliff Robertson. Won't you give up some cigarettes so some American children can have their first toothbrush? Send your dollar to Americans for Children's Relief, Box 5050, Stamford, Connecticut. 
Box 5050, Stamford, Connecticut. One dollar. And, of course, if you can afford more, give more. Trivia fans, take note of this item. The New Jersey State Legislature has a bill pending to make the honeybee the official state insect. State Senator Joseph Merlino says there are more than 45,000 honeybee colonies in New Jersey. More honeybees per square mile than any state except California. Merlino may be buzzing with excitement over the bill, but other lawmakers might take the sting out of it. Doug Poling, CBS News.